All right, well, Wilmer, we, uh, we're really excited about doing this. Thank you so much. And I feel like there are a lot of things people know about you and know you for. They know you for the walk-offs. They know you for 2015 and everything that happened there. But let's, let's start this thing off right off the bat with something people don't know about you, which is that you are not the only Wilmer Flores in your immediate <laughs> family. In fact, you have two brothers named Wilmer and your father's named Wilmer? Yes, the, uh, the youngest one is named... Wilmer De Jesus. Um, the other one is Wilmer Raphael, uh -huh. which is my, my father's name, Wilmer Raphael. And what's your middle name? Are you just straight Alejandro. Wil Wilmer, Wilmer Alejandro. Alejandro. Yeah. So did your parents distinguish and did you guys distinguish which Wilmer based on the middle names? How would they, how would they <laughs> refer to you growing up? I don't know, but uh, on our family, they don't call us Wilmer. We all have nicknames. Okay. Yeah. So your nickname is? Uh, Mine's, uh, they call me Katire. That, okay, so that Kati, so that's how you pronounce it, Kati, yeah. Katire. Katire. What does that mean? It means, um, like, when you're little, you will, I was, like, really blonde. Uh -huh. So as I got older, I, <laughs> I, w I was not anymore. But, um, yeah, it's basically when you're blonde, Katire. So that means so blondie. It means blonde. Right. So yeah. your nickname as a, a brown haired man is Blondie. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's how I say Katire. <laughs> so if your mom was calling you guys, she would refer to you by these nicknames? Yes. She wouldn't call out Wilmer. You never hear the name Wilmer. No. Um, my youngest brother, they call him uh, Chiquito. Okay. Because that's uh, what my, my dad used to call him when he, was, when he was a baby. And they used to call me Katire when I was a baby. Did you ever get an explanation from your father why he decided to name three of his sons his name? Not really. I mean, his name is Wilmer, so <laughs> I don't have to ask him why. <laughs> Are you aware that George Foreman did that? I feel like yeah, that's, no, the one that's guy true. That George knows. Foreman, and he named his daughters like, like Georgina, Georgina, yeah. Georgette. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, do, I don't you, know. do you have a sister? <laughs> yeah. She's not named. No. Like Wilma. No. Her name is Car uh, Carla, and I just I just had another sister. Oh, you just had another yeah. sister. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, she's uh, one one month old. Wow, oh, one wow. month yeah. old. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. That is <laughs> crazy. That is crazy. I know that life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, her name is Ana Lucia. Okay, congratulations. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Have you thought about eventually when you have kids, are you going to name your kids Wilmer too? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how to think about it. I don't even have a girlfriend. I, how can I think about <laughs> 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 names? <laughs> All right, so I think we got a lot more female listeners now. After yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I think we now that we've gotten we've exhausted that topic. Yes, um, let's talk about your your upbringing in Venezuela because one of the things that I, I know that we Wayne and I always talk about just separately, but I'm always fascinated to know about how you guys got to this level. At one point in time, you were just like we were. You loved baseball, you played baseball as a kid growing up, but, but somewhere along the line, you became so much better than everybody else and, and had this either incredible work ethic, incredible skill, and incredible love of the game. Where did that originally come from? Do you remember a, a time where you started to really progress past a lot of other guys? Well, uh, I started playing when I was four years old. You know, uh, my my mom and my mom and dad just took me to the ballpark because so I had something to do after school. Uh, it's not like they wanted me to play baseball. Um, my dad liked baseball, so he just took me to a uh, baseball field and uh, I got in a, in a team and started playing. Um, when I was ten years old, I was I was I realized that I was good. <laughs> Everybody know I, I mean he can hit. He was one of the best on the team. Um, and then when I turned 14 years old, um, this guy, he went to one of my games and he had an academy, mm -hmm. a baseball academy in Venezuela. And he talked me to his, he talked me to his academy. Um, was that near your home or did you have to leave? No, that was in Valencia. That was That's in Valencia. Okay. Yeah, in okay. Valencia. Um, and then I, I was 14 years old and, you know, I realized that, you know, I, I can sign as a baseball player. Mm -hmm. Because I was good. That's what he told me. It was never in my mm. mind. It wasn't in my dad's mind. You guys had never been thinking about it before. It no. Was just this this guy told you, hey, by the way. Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to practice every day in the morning, and then after we practice, you're going to go to school. Um, so I did that not thinking about I want to be a baseball player so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, when I turned uh, 16, it, it just happened. 
And that was the day you signed. You signed on your 16th birthday, yes. the first day that you were eligible to sign with the Mets. How did the Mets approach you? Uh, well, obviously, they have scouts in Venezuela. Uh, every team has scouts. Um, I actually came to Port St. Lucie when I, fi when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, it was in 2007, and extend the string. I remember Omar Minaya was there and all the, all the other uh, big guys. And they saw me playing. They saw me playing. Uh, they liked me. And, and then on August 6th, uh, I signed on my birthday. Is that a decision that in any way is difficult? Is there a part of you that you're 16 years old? I mean, you like you said, you hadn't been thinking about this for that long, right? And all of a sudden, while it's an incredible opportunity that, that most people in their life never get to, to pursue, it involves leaving your home as, as still a kid, really, and going to a different country where you don't speak the language and, and pursuing really an unknown. Yeah, I think that was the hardest part. Um, I remember my first year um, in Kingsport, and I told I told uh, Tony Bernard said that I wanted to go home. It was like August, wow. and I missed my family. I missed my uh, grandma. I, I missed everybody. I had nobody. I was just playing baseball, and and I mean, you know how the model is. I wasn't even making money. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Just playing <laughs> by myself and. I just want to go home, you know. Yeah. I just want to go home, and but that was the toughest part, um, the language, obviously. But uh, fortunately, we had a lot of uh, Latin coaches that helped us, and uh, Pedro Lopez was our manager, and he he helped me a lot. Yeah, who were some of those guys? What what kind of things did they tell you to influence you to stay and to pursue this as a career? Uh, well, I actually had uh, a conversation with Pedro Lopez. He was the manager. I said, man. My, my grandma called me and she was crying and I, all I wanted to do was go home, you know. Your grandma was guilted. You yeah, <laughs> uh, man, because it was my birthday and August say it was my birthday so it was my first birthday away from home. So, so you were um, just turning 17, you are playing in Kingsport. Yes, I was playing in Kingsport and I got so sad that I didn't care. <laughs> I just wanted to go home. <laughs> um, you know, I think sometimes people take for granted, especially when they, they watch you or listen to you, you speak such fluent English, just how difficult that must be to, A, be trying to pursue this incredibly difficult sport, um, and B, like you said, be in Tennessee and not speak the language. Uh, we know that, that, you know, this whole story is out there about how much you watch Friends and, and how much that helped you, but how long of a process and how uncomfortable and difficult of a process is it to be kind of plopped in, into a brand new country in a clubhouse with, I'm sure, a lot of people that did not speak the same language as you, and just trying to get through that? Well, it's uh, you, you, you're going to speak English if you want to. You know, if you really want it, you're gonna, it's, uh, it's not going to be hard. Um, obviously, being around guys that speak English um, helped me a lot. Um, uh, I was studying English in, in Venezuela since I was 14, but uh, it was just basic, basic English. Once I got here, um, I wanted to learn more, so I started picking up things from my teammates and putting it all together, watching TV. Um, I didn't speak it until I was like 19. Mm -hmm. I was just listening and listening until you know, and then one day you just busted it out fluently. <laughs> <laughs> one day, yeah, yeah. I got, no, I got to do it. There's no translators or anything in the minor leagues, too. So you're really on your own for the most part. Uh, there's translators, but um, you don't have to do interviews like up here. So uh, basically, the translators are the coaches that they know that know English. So they're gonna help you um, on what the manager is trying to say or some place. But you know, basic stuff, baseball stuff. Uh, but that really helped me that we had uh, coaches that sp speak Spanish. Were there guys that, even just to backtrack a, a little bit to when you were growing up in Venezuela, um, but were there guys that you really idolized at the major league level that you watched, you know, guys from Venezuela maybe that, that you um, were able to take something out of or, or try and pattern your game off of? Uh, I can't, I can't tell you one guy because um, we had a TV, but we didn't have too many channels. Mm -hmm. So 
I wasn't, we weren't in social media. Um, so the only, why, the only guy I really heard about was Derek Jeter. Really? I heard about him. Uh, but all, all I really did <laughs> was... You didn't even see him, really. You just heard about him. Yeah, <laughs> I heard about him, and obviously watched him a couple games. Uh -huh. But um, it's, uh, we didn't have too many channels to watch, so we, uh, we only get to watch a couple games, a couple baseball games. But like I said before, the only guy uh, I saw and everybody loved was the guard Alfonso when he used to play in Valencia mm -hmm. for Magallanes. So I used to watch him every time I went to, to the ballpark. And you, you guys still have a really close relationship too, right? He's, he's yeah. kind of one of your, your mentors and yes. was... Where, where did that relationship start, and what is it like right now? Um, we, we still talk. I mean, I was just talking to him the other day, right right after the uh, day game in, in Yankee Stadium. Uh, just about hitting. It's, it's always about hitting. Um, I always ask him, and um, I will show him my bat, uh, like, um, what am I doing wrong, or what, what should I do? Um, but uh, the relationship started when, when he started coaching for the Mets. Mm -hmm. well, uh, Valencia is a pretty big city. Did, did you have a chance to play with some of these guys that are from there, or that are in the big leagues now, guys like Cesar Hernandez or Cervelli or Sal Perez? Did anybody kind of come across your radar uh, yeah, on your way up? I uh, played with uh, Salvador Perez. Um, I didn't play with Cesar, but um, I saw him playing. Uh, but I was really close with uh, Salvador. We, we play. He's a year older, but we, we still play together. And you, you guys are still, he's one of your best friends, right? Yeah. You guys are still yeah. close. And how often when you go back are you guys together in the off season? Yeah, we hang out a lot whenever uh, we go to Venezuela. Uh, he's, he always goes in December, mm -hmm. and I always do too. Weird playing against him <laughs> in the World Series in 2015? It was really weird, man. I tell you, it was, it was fun. <laughs> uh, his mom and my mom were here, and they had a lot of fun. It's like. You know, we, we played as a kid, and now we're here playing the Wolf Series. It's, yeah. it's, it was special. Well, let's go there. Let's talk about 2015. I mean, that was kind of your breakout. You, you came up to the big leagues before that, and you had some moments in 2014. But 15 was it. That's when everybody started to know who Wilmer Flores was, and specifically because of the trade that didn't happen. You were supposed to get traded to the Milwaukee Brewers. That was the report. And of course, uh, you famously had that moment on the field. Has anybody ever talked to you about this before? <laughs> 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 a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, d just from the fan reaction, were you surprised that the fans reacted the way they did to those moments, to that week where you had the near trade and then the walk off home run? I was surprised. Uh, you know, that day that I didn't get trade, well, everything that happened that day, next day I didn't play. And then first game against the Nationals, then I, my first at bat, I got a standard ovation. I had no idea why. <laughs> um, but, you know, that show, you know, they, they actually care that you care, you know, that, that you, that you want to be here. But a lot of us want to be here, mm -hmm. you know. It's just that... Uh, they, uh, I show, I show them with our knowledge <laughs> um, that I, I love being here. You know, it's it's interesting that we, you talk about the fan that you weren't expecting. You didn't know what it was for because I think, if we're being honest, people forget that th the reaction wasn't always great prior to that for you, right? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, and and you know what to expect. It's uh, it's New York City. It's tough, and and you know the fans depending on what's going on, can, can react a certain way. But once that moment happened, it seemed like you forever were ingratiated with this fan base. But like, do you feel even now, like 10, 20, 30 years down the line when your career is long gone, that you are going to be one of these forever Mets? Do you feel like that, that reaction essentially is going to stick? Well, I, I hope so. I hope, you know, I hope I stay here and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a long time man. But after that day, I mean, it was just special everywhere we went, you know. People were cheering, they were, they were telling me they, they love me and, and all that. But, um, but more than that, it was, you know, we, we were hot. We were playing good and just being here was, was, was fun. It was a lot of fun. And I really, I really appreciate the fans for it. It was, it was fun for me to go out there every day and knowing that they were, you know, they were cheering for me. Do you still 
get that reaction, though, even when things aren't going well, you still seem beloved out there. Do, do you still have run-ins with fans now where they refer back to that moment or they tell you how much they love you and, and how much they appreciate how much you love this franchise? Is that a constant thing with you? Yes, they, they still, they st I mean, I still hear, I love you, or don't ever get traded, <laughs> um, met forever. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, hearing all those all those things it just make you feel good. Uh -huh. You know, uh, you still you still gotta play good so they keep loving you. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it makes you feel good every time you go out there. What was that season like for you on the field? You had to play a lot of shortstop that year, especially after the Ruben Tejada injury. You had to play shortstop through the NLCS and the World Series after that. You know, how difficult was it for you to transform yourself into being an everyday shortstop in the big leagues? It was. Uh, it was it was tough because uh, my um, my last two years in the minor leagues I, I only played second base and third base, um, and then they asked me to move back to short, which was the hardest thing I ever did. Um, I put all the work, uh, you know, I got a little bit a little bit quicker, and um, I was a short. But I play all the positions, and um, now that I, I have played a lot of first base now, now. That's when I realized that playing all the position is hard, man. <laughs> it's really, it's really hard because you're at first base, and now one day they ask you to go to third base. It, it's tough. Well, what is the toughest part about doing that? What's the hardest part about making those switches? Um, it's just when you, like right now, I'm playing first, uh, first base every day. Um, when you go to a different position, it's just tough. You feel lost. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing, but you feel lost, like you haven't been there. Um, but it, I mean, you, you're an athlete. You you're an infielder. You, you get used to it. But uh, it's just much better when you're in one place and, and you know what to do. Every, you expect the same thing every day. I want to talk a, a little bit about that incredible run in 2015, but I don't want to get too far away from the moment and the trade and the non-trade and and what took place after because I feel like this this story has been told from so many angles and you've talked about it so much and. You know, everyone involved really has had a discussion, but is there one thing that, that maybe isn't out there from a, a conversation that you had, you know, maybe immediately after the next couple of days that really meant a lot to you from someone that, um, I know we've talked about Sandy Alderson apologizing for that moment, but um, whether it was with a player, a family member, a, a coach that kind of helped bring it all back for you. Um, well, right, right in that moment, that day, well, uh, the first guy that came to me was David Wright. He said, I remember he told me, I was talking to him in the cage during the game. I was still in the game, but <laughs> we were in the cage talking. And this said, is while you thought you were traded? Yes. Yeah, you thought yes. you were traded in that moment. You're in yes. the cage. You're still playing yes. in the game. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know if I was. Or I was. Uh, uh, I don't know if I was out of the game. Um, but I was, I was, he was talking to me. He said, uh, Listen, if, you, if you're going to go somewhere else because the other team wants you to play for them, you know? Um, but I say... Yeah, I, easy for him to say. He's never been anywhere else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was he was just trying to, you know, cheer me up. But it wasn't about, I know, it wasn't about going to Milwaukee or something. It was just, you know, getting emotional for, for leaving where, where you were born. Do you remember that night? Like, do you do you remember being in the game with all those thoughts racing through your head um, or is it all just kind of a blur that now you've seen highlights of it and people have talked about it but you don't really remember the moments I do remember the moment uh, I remember I, I, I was thinking <laughs> my mom was coming my mom was coming in six days <laughs> is she <laughs> she's got to go to Milwaukee <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be so mad because yeah. <laughs> she's not coming to New York. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that people don't know about that trade that, that you've found out since then about what really happened, why it didn't go down, or, or what was supposed to happen that, that ended up not happening? Not really. Um, I mean, they said it all. I don't think there was, there was any secret. The only thing is what I told you uh, right after the game. Sandy and Jeff came to me and said, there's no trade. That Wait, was it. What's your reaction to that? Because so, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, 
when Sandy said that to us, yeah. he that was his quote too. He said there something like there is no trade, there will be no trade, something. And I was so taken aback by it that my second question was just, wait, so there is no trade? <laughs> and he was like, there is no trade. So I mean, that's me. I'm not involved in yeah. it. What was your response when they just say there is no trade? Uh, we were we were in the trainer room. I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you spending right. the next day thinking you still might get traded though? Like, are you in in that time? Because that was Wednesday, Thursday. Like you said, you didn't play. The trade deadline was on Friday. So in the moments between that night and Friday, when the deadline passed, were you concerned that you were going to get moved? No, no. I feel like after that, I wasn't I wasn't going to get traded. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't even thinking about it. All right, honestly. we'll get off we'll get off this topic in a second. But I have the same question about that walk off home run. Um, is that a moment that you remember? Do you remember clearing the base? Do you remember making contact with that ball? That ball going out? I remember Wayne and I standing behind home plate, and I don't think you hadn't hit a home run in a long time. I don't remember the exact number of at yeah. bats. It was like a month. Yeah, and yeah. we <laughs> both said to each other, we like half jokingly said, "Well, he's gonna hit a walk off right <laughs> here," and then boom. <laughs> Um, honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't even trying. It just happened. I wasn't even trying. Um, if you see my swing, um, it wasn't a, you know, one of those swings where you try to lift the ball. Um, uh, it was just a line drive swing and somehow the ball got out. Um, but I wasn't, I was, honestly, I was just trying to hit the ball up the middle. Yeah. And well, I, it was, <laughs> 385 it, was <laughs> <feet>. <laughs> it was a fastball in the air and I just react to it and, you know, I put a good swing and, and he went out. Um, Do you remember your first thought though? Like as soon as that ball, as, as that ball makes contact with the bat, is it as unbelievable to you as you're rounding the base as it is to when everybody he, else? Yeah, when he went out, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to go out, but when he went out, it was just unbelievable. And not only for me, but, you know, we were playing, we were chasing the Nationals uh -huh. were uh, two or three games behind, mm -hmm. and you know it was, it was a very important game for us. Was that a conscious decision when you got to home plate and you tugged at your jersey? Uh, yes, it, it was just uh, it was just a sign that that uh, I belong here. That you were met. Yeah. Did what did the guys? Anything stand out about anything the guys said to you afterwards? Was there anybody that said anything? And like, what was the scene in? We see the scene outside. What was the scene in the clubhouse afterwards? After after the after walk the, off, after the walk off. Well, I mean, we were just celebrating. They didn't say nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> do you look back on that season? Well, I think even Steve and I do to some some regard. It was our first years of uh, full time covering this team, and it was you were still a very young player at that time. Do you, do you look back and think maybe you took that for granted that you guys had that kind of run that you won the division, that you had so many champagne celebrations, and you really haven't had any since then. Well, we, we had a little bit in 2016, um, but you know we know we know what it's like, so we we want it back. Uh, we have a lot of guys here that uh, they have celebrated with champagne, and um, we know what it's like, man. We we want to go there again. Did you realize how unique it was going through it, though? Like, did you? I think what what Wayne's getting at, and that's what we again what we talk about all the time is. It was our first year. We almost expected it after that. You know, you're saying, yeah. "Oh, this is this is fun to cover this team," <laughs> and it's not that easy, right? So it's in that not. moment, did you fully like? Do you think if it happened again now, you would appreciate it more than you did then, just knowing how difficult it is? To yes. Get back? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, I was talking uh, to Jose the other day about it. He's like, I mean, 2016 when he was here, he said, uh, "Man, if we uh, we win the World Series, I'm gonna." I'm gonna celebrate like mm -hmm. you know like crazy <laughs> because um, I haven't celebrated since he he hasn't celebrated since '07 I think yeah. Yeah. so '06 oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, so oh, he uh, he said I'm gonna get a good taste of that champagne. <laughs> I remember Michael Kadire was like just had such a look of reverence on his face yeah. when you guys won the pennant at Wrigley Field and it, it almost seemed like that some of the younger guys there were a ton of young guys on that team. That it was just it was another party, it was another celebration. Yeah. But to Kadir, it seemed like wow, we we just got well, to the World Series. Well, you know, this was special. Yeah, and I, I, even when you guys lost Game Five, remember you came out right and you're thanking all the fans, and it didn't have the feeling. At least I didn't get the feeling. I don't know if, if Wayne did or you, or you did, but it didn't have the feeling to me 
of that was a good run coming to the end. It felt like there was going to be many there was going to be many more moments like this. Did yeah. it feel that way to you? To you? Yeah, it definitely did. Um, you know, with with the team we had in 2016, um, you know, we we thought we were going to go there again, but. We know too. We know too far away. You know. We, I mean, obviously we're having a bad season, but um, we still have all the guys here to do it. You know, it's guys are here, but um, but they're still here. We're still here, yeah. and we're all good. We, you know, we and, and we can go there again. So before it gets too deep in, I, I think we were talking about 2015 and your home run. That's such a highlight from it, and and really in a lot of respects, kind of propelled you guys forward that game, that moment. You've now become known as the walk-off guy, right? <laughs> walk-off you know, king. The walk-off king. Every, <laughs> even last night, well, we're taping, by the way, I know we're not going to air this, but we're taping this, uh, what day is it today? The 20, Tuesday, July 24th. So Monday, July 23rd, if you're listening and watching, go back. <laughs> you were on deck, and everyone just, it was this assumption, well, I mean, he's going to come up here, and that's going <laughs> to oh another God. walk-off home run. Um, do you think, we have it all written down, do you think you can name, remember every walk-off home run you or walk-off hit you have? Yeah, there have been ten. Uh, I got the list here. He's got cheat. the list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> you can. Yeah, All right, can. All right let's go, go for it. Give it a shot. Number one. What do you got? Number one, uh, sack fly against the Rockies. Yep. Wow. <laughs> that was uh, um, off Latroy Hawkins. Latroy Hawkins. 2014. Can you even go with the pitcher? Can you name the pitcher in all of them? I'll try. That would be aggressive. Uh, okay, right. so September eighth, twenty fourteen, versus Colorado Sack Fly, Latroy Hawkins, correct. Um, number two. Number two against the Phillies. Yep. yep. <laughs> Lefty Araujo. Yep. Yes. Very yeah. Good. It was what was the what was it? What do you mean? What, what pitch? kind of hit was it? Oh, it was uh, over the shortstop. Yeah, it was. Yes. <laughs> May twenty sixth, twenty fifteen. Okay. Okay. Number three. Uh, number three. Single up the middle against uh, the Blue Jays. I don't remember the guy. <laughs> That's the Blue Jays. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was <laughs> Liam Hendricks. Hendricks. Okay. They had actually won 11 right in a row. That broke their winning streak. Wow. Spirit. This is impressive uh, to, that it's in order. Yeah. All right, number four. Number four. <laughs> um, of course. Yeah, uh, the big one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pitcher. Uh, Rivero. Yeah, yeah. Felipe, Felipe Rivero. He's got a different name now, though. He's Felipe Vasquez. Felipe yeah. Vasquez. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I never got that right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to figure that out. Number five. Um, this might be the hardest one. Um, Oakland. No. No, you skipped one. You skipped uh, one. Yeah, it was a weird play. It wasn't really. Oh, a hit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Up the middle. Mm -hmm. It was. It was. It wasn't a good at bat. <laughs> we, we got lucky. Yeah, Ryan Shipp <laughs> threw a ball. Yeah. For the San Diego. Yeah. San Diego. Fielder's choice. Yeah. I don't remember the. Uh, All right. The so position. you had you you had Oakland was the next one. Oakland. Yeah. What'd you do there? Homer. There you go. Uh, you don't remember who it was again? Oof. <laughs> it was a Dominican guy. <laughs> I was, know. It was about a year ago. Yeah, it was what, a Dominican guy. What was his name? Simone Castro. 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 Okay. Uh, Seven. Next. Uh, this year, right? Yeah, we're yeah. into this yeah, season. Okay, now. All right, so <laughs> this year you should knock uh, these off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oliver, Oliver, yeah. Yeah. Oka, uh, Homer. Okay. Yep, against Milwaukee in April. Milwaukee. Okay. On uh, an absolutely freezing cold day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number eight. Number eight. Um, sack fly. Yep. Yeah. Sack fly. What team? Um, Diamondbacks. Yeah. Lefty. I don't know. Who. Andrew Chafin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is unbelievable. Pretty good. Yeah, this yeah, is all right. Number nine. We're almost to the end. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> number nine, man. Come on, man. This is so this is two ago. This is you know, he had he had one recently, and then this one. Two months ago. Yeah, not even a month ago. I remember the last. Oh yeah, one. a month ago. Which one? Oh, the last one. You, you oh, uh, the, uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Lefty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, third base line. That's yeah. right. Double. Double. Yeah. Uh, and Steven then Brault. Yeah. And then the last one. And then the last one, Homer. Uh, Hernandez? No. Uh, no. No. I don't know. Arano. Victor Arano. Arano. Close. 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 <laughs> 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 now, we, I think. That's pretty good. That's like, that's like 85%. That was absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. I'm very impressed yeah, by that. that. Was really good. Um, the, when we're taping this, you have two more home games before, I think, this episode drops, right? 
Yeah. Yes. We if we do today it. and tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So are, do we have number eleven in, in you here? <laughs> I, mean, I hope no. I hope, I, hope we, I hope we score ten runs <laughs> and we don't have to. You need another action. homer from the all-time home run walk-off home run Mets record. You got the RBIs already. Yeah. Home run. Yeah, but you're I mean, only tied in home runs. It's not so. that impressive until yeah, you right. get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Oh my God. Fan it's question. Not, it's not so easy. Yeah. Let's yes. Fan question. So everyone knows about you and the show Friends. I thought I was the biggest Friends fan. I think you're no very chance. close now. <laughs> no chance. No chance. <laughs> what is your favorite episode? These are fan questions now. So what is your favorite episode of Friends? Oh, man, there's a lot of them. But See, a real, a real fan has yeah, one. I have one. one I have episode. one. It's got to be... The one in Barbados. <laughs> the one in Barbados. You're talking late, friends. Yes. This is I'm not even sure if I know what happens in that one. Oh, so many things happen. I think it was a, a two-part episode. No, there were more. It was the end of one season and the beginning of yeah. another, right? The end of season nine, beginning of season ten. Yeah, I it's, checked out. It's that. when, um, when, <laughs> when Rachel and Joey. Rachel and Joey get together. And Ross and. Uh, <sighs> what's this girl's name? Like, uh, it was the other paleontologist. Charlie. Charlie. Oh, <laughs> man, that might be very good. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, and <Char> Ross, <laughs> Ross and Charlie get together, and then Phoebe and Mike get Phoebe back and Mike, together. Yes. Have you have you seen Hank Ariza around here and talked to him Hank about? Uh, Hank Azaria. Hank Ariza. Jeez, Hank Ariza. <laughs> combining Hank Azaria and I Trevor, Trevor Ariza. Ariza. Yeah, yeah, have you seen him around? He's a huge Mets fan. Have you met him, talked to him at all? Not he, really. Oh, come on. I, he yeah. came out here for Brockmire and all I said. Do you even know him if you saw him? Like, I feel yeah, like he looks so different on He Friends, was David. Though. No, he's David. That's what I said. That's why. He I, looks that's different. David. <laughs> scientist guy. The scientist guy. The scientist no, guy. I've seen him. It's just uh, we haven't talked about Friends. <laughs> that seems like <laughs> a lost your favorite opportunity. favorite Friends character? Like, who do you relate to? Uh, I don't relate to him, but I like Joey. Joey. Yeah. He's my like, favorite. I, I'm kind of a Chandler guy. It's just I like Chandler. Chandler? Yeah. They're all good. They're it's all just good. Right. when I go home and I go for four, I, I start watching Joey. I just laugh. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes me laugh, man. He pulls you out of the slump. <laughs> I, can, I am good. stunned, though. I'm, not st I'm stunned that you would go that late. My favorite episode is the one where, I think it's the one with the jellyfish might be what it's called, but it's where they, Ross and Ray, I'm sorry, uh, Rachel and Monica gamble with, Joey and Chandler for their apartment. And oh, Rasta, okay. You know, Miss yeah, Chandler yeah, yeah, yeah. Bong and all that stuff. <laughs> um, all right. That was no. That was what. So they asked uh, one of the questions. They're having a trivia game. And they uh, asked, "What is yeah. the name on on Chandler Bing's? Yeah. What is the name on the TV guy uh, that goes yeah, Chandler?" Yeah. And they, he I says, that. "I know Chandler gets it. It's Chandler Bing." <laughs> I like the early episodes. No, it's with Chandler the Ross, Bong. With the Ross Rachel. Yeah, but when that was getting together and all that. Was early. Yeah, it was yeah, early. The early ones. All right. Um, on a so break. They were on a break. They were on a they break. On a break. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Were they, were they on a break or not? Okay, you I, tell what us. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> I, I, I would say they were on a break. It seemed like she, they yeah, were on a break. She yeah. said we need to take a break. He walked away. I mean, <laughs> then she he, he calls to try and work things out, and he hears. Uh, and she didn't answer. She, right? No, she answered, and the guy that, that he was oh, telling yeah. us was uh, in the background. What was this guy's name? Oh, so oh, that Joshua know. guy? Is that who it was? No, no, no. no, no. Was, Joshua, um, she started dating after, yeah, afterwards. Oh, come okay. on. Yeah, she worked at Bloomingdale's with Gunther. No, no not Gunther. Gunther. Gunther Someone's like the peanut gallery talking That's about enough. Gunther back here. Mark. Mark. Gosh. Mark. <laughs> 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 All right. So that was the fan question, right? Do we have any other fan questions? Uh, we have we're one more with? from okay. a guy named Ryan. What is your favorite road city? San Diego, no question. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, good one. it has always been since my first road trip. All right, San Diego, um, this is the final thing. We end all of our podcasts with this. It's a tradition. We've gotten some great, great answers from ex-Mets. All right, so now we're seeing yeah, the, the old-timers yeah. have a, some good stories. Favorite Jay Horowitz story that we can talk <laughs> about. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if I've been here this long. <laughs> Come on, Brandon long. Nimmo. How, now, Brandon Nimmo was, was tame. You know, he said that he, how Jay is always looking... Yeah, when he reads the newspaper, newspaper he reads it right up to his face. Well, one day I was looking at his phone, mm -hmm. 
and and the letters were like this big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't oversize. Letters. Like it's if you have to read a time. if you have to read a page, he's gonna. He's <laughs> For those, that so are, big. for those that are listening to this podcast and can't see what Wilmer did, he basically made the size of a letter basically the size of the phone and yeah. scrolled all the way through <laughs> for one single text. Like one letter at a time. That sounds good. That sounds good. All right. Well, I mean, I think this went as well as yeah. can be expected. I'm a little, your time. I'm a yeah. little embarrassed yeah. that I was that bad. I think yeah, I Steve froze. I'm, 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 I, you know, I'm, I've watched that series through. You can ask me questions. Sad. I have uh, friends that they ask me questions about, like, about friends, like, let's see if, if you know about everything. And I always and you knock it out. Yeah. <laughs> he's not only the walk off king, he's the friends, he's the friends king. king. All right, we'll need to, you can't we'll ask need me to any study question. back. And, uh, <laughs> 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 All right, he is Wilbur Flores. That was amazing. Thanks so much for your time, brother. No problem, man.